Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am Ari Engel, the Director of Creative Community for Peace. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Creative Community for Peace is a nonprofit entertainment industry organization comprised of prominent members of the entertainment community who have come together to promote arts and culture as a bridge to peace. Uh, we are also the leading entertainment organization working to counter growing anti-Semitism within their entertainment community. Uh, we rely on donations to do our work since we are a nonprofit and to bring you these amazing panel sessions. So please consider making a donation. Uh, to learn more about our work and to donate, you can go visit ccfpeace.com. That's ccfpeace.com or creativecommunityforpeace.com. We have something a bit more fun today as we talk to the leaders in the Israeli fashion industry about the state of the fashion industry in Israel and the impact Israeli fashion models and style has had on the world. Uh, for all of those joining us on Zoom, you can leave questions in the Q&A section and we will get to as many of them as possible towards the end of the, uh, the event. Uh, on Facebook, we have people joining us at Facebook Live. You can leave questions there too and we'll try and pick some of those up as well. Uh, to briefly introduce our guest, first we have Betty Rockaway. She started her career as a makeup artist working on both Israeli TV and at the Camry Theater. In 1985, she founded Image, Israel's first professional modeling agency and launched the career of many top Israeli models and actors. With her extensive experience in model management, she has been a judge for TV Top Models of Israel and a Lean Ford Supermodels competition, and today acts as a mentor and personal manager for many young models entering the field. How are you doing, Betty? She's gonna be popping up soon. Matthew will unmute. Uh, to continue though, next we have Madi Reef. Madi began his professional career in fashion production, and for many years he has been creating, producing, and directing hundreds of fashion, lifestyle, and television events in Israel and abroad. In 2010, he founded Tel Aviv Fashion Week, Israel's premier annual fashion event. And in 2012, he was crowned as the most influential person in the Israeli fashion world by AT Magazine. Um, next, we have Shahar Avnet, who is a designer who has worked with international celebrities such as Beyonce. In 2017, she launched the Shahar Avnet brand at Paris Fashion Week. And in 2019, she won the Israeli Designer of the Year Award from the Ministry of Culture and Sports in Israel. How you doing, Shahar? And unfortunately, Stav uh, Strashko, uh, who was supposed to join us, had a family emergency, and uh, maybe she'll join us at some point, but uh, unfortunately, I don't know if she'll be able to make it. We wish her and her family well um, and, a quick, uh, and a quick recovery. Um, our moderator today is the great Sarah Williamson, who is a journalist and TV host for I-24 News. I'm sure you've all seen her on there. And with that, I turn it over to you, Sarah. I bet the I shall have. Uh, Sarah, you just have to unmute. Can you oh, all hear there, me now? There we go. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for having me on today. It's my absolute pleasure to moderate this panel. Fashion is something that I am passionate about and have spent a lot of time within the industry as well uh, over the years. Um, but I am a journalist, so moderating panels and interviewing people and uh, getting the very best answers out of people is what I do best. So I'm gonna, without further ado, take it away. I want to start with Betty actually, because Betty, you are the founder of the modeling industry here in Israel and without models, there is no fashion industry. So you have seen the way that the industry has evolved over the years. Tell us a little bit about that, how it started back in 1985 and to compare it to how it is now. Uh, in 1985, when I started, they wanted, uh, you know, the models, the size was 38 and uh, they weren't very skinny models. They were tall, not very, very tall, 72, 74. Later, it became really like the top models, Shira Stahl and Mayad Karet and Kim, all the top is really models. They wanted them very skinny, very, very skinny, uh, size 34, uh, very tall, 175 and up. And uh, it stayed that way for a long time, you know, with the heroin cheek. And uh, these are the types they wanted. It, now with the, the models in Israel, 
added around the world uh, with the Instagram, uh, the clients are looking more, you know, for if it's not couture, they're still looking more for, you know, the models that have a lot of followers uh, in their Instagram. And uh, uh, the, even Moti Raif, he did the Israeli fashion show, not the last one, the one before, he used a lot of, uh, he used a lot of girls that were, uh, have a lot of followers on the Instagram. And another great thing, he started using women that are real women, real, uh, you know, with different kinds of sizes, 40, 42, 44, 48, everything, which was uh, a great thing that there is a change around the world that uh, people want real things less, uh, you know, not these models that are, you cannot touch them. They're, like, they're very, very uh, different, very far away. Uh, I think the world is going to more a, a, a real things. You know, this Corona virus brought uh, people to know what's what's important in life and what's uh, and what's real, and that that it, things are uh, you know you, you don't know what's happening from today to tomorrow. It's really even in Israel every day there is new 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 things new laws and. Uh, uh, I think it's the, it's Absolutely. the world thing and it's going to change, you know, uh, even more. Absolutely. The world certainly is changing the, the world in general and the fashion world as we know it. Motti, I want to bring you in here as you've just been uh, brought up here by Betty as well. Now, she mentioned about how throughout the Tel Aviv Fashion Weeks that you've put together, you have uh, used a number of models and really celebrated diversity uh, within your shows. Tell me about how you have seen it evolve from your point of view and how important it is to include diversity. Good evening, first of all. Um, you know, I'm, we are working, I'm working for almost like 35 years. Uh, and for many years, the uh, fashion industry um and uh used only like one kind of a model of a beauty model like as betty said you know tall skinny mostly blonde and you know i'm not a designer but uh in the last few years you know for many years i heard, i used to hear uh women at the audience say it's beautiful but it's not for me you know it's beautiful for like those 16 17 years old so in the last few years, I tried in all my projects to use women, all sizes, all uh, ages, all colors, all religion. And since we started with Fashion Week, I knew that this is the time that we have to push it forward. And for example, in the last Fashion Week, actually that didn't happen on the last March, you know, usually every, every Fashion Week we have between 40 to 50 models that every, every, all designers are using them. In the last fashion week, we had th uh, 350 women that supposed to, to show on the, in the last fashion week. All sizes, all, all, all colors, all uh, ages. It was a beautiful cast, which didn't happen, but I believe that uh, uh, change absolutely happened here. And Shaha, do you see the same? Do you see the same thing with you as well, with your brand and your styling and the modeling, that, the models that you use? Are you also seeing a change in diversity? And how are you celebrating this as well? Well, I was a, a student in Shankar. Uh, I was studying fashion, and at the same time, I was studying on a woman, like how um, commercial life affects on us. And when I was a student, I was promised to myself, because I was never skinny in my life, but always I love myself and I felt like wonderful to wear everything that I want. So I decided that if I'm going to have a fashion brand, it will be for all the kind of the woman and all the sizes. So when I started my brand, um, I named like the motto of the brand is love yourself. Because I believe that when you love yourself and you feel like pretty, so you will be 100% more pretty whether you don't feel it. So Moti knows it too, that uh, 
from the first photo shoot in my uh, uh, brand, the first catalog was always um, size 36 until 46. And uh, the models were 17 until 75 years old. Because I believe that you, every age of different, like beautiful, we can be anytime we want. Absolutely. Now, I want to touch on, there's so much to talk about. Coronavirus is obviously a big issue that has really affected the fashion industry. But before we get into these finer details, I want to talk about how the fashion industry in Israel compares to the rest of the world and how, um, how it stands on a global scale. I think, Motti, I might take it back to you for that, considering you've spent a lot of time working in LA. How did your time there sort of help you develop the industry here as well? You're obviously a very key figure in the fashion industry here. So how do you think, how do you think that, all, that all ties in? I don't think there is a connection between what I did in LA. In LA, uh, you have to understand, Israel is a different country, you know, especially with the weather and, and uh, it, it doesn't, you cannot connect things that happen outside here. Uh, but uh, first of all, I was in LA many, many years ago, so I don't remember anything from there. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, I think that today everything changed, you know, it's not just uh, everything. The Israeli designers are open now to the, to the, all the, to the world uh, through uh, all the uh, social media also, you know, for in our, in our time, Betty and I, uh, we used to bring, um, uh, buyers to Israel. Today, you don't need it. Today, Shaha can go on a, with a, open her a website and she can, she can sell everywhere. So time will change, especially now with the Corona, uh, everything is changing, you know? You know, people are not going to malls, people are not going, people are going online and buying. The problem with Israeli fashion is uh, that they are a little bit more expensive because people can buy today very cheap um, clothing everywhere. So we are struggling with with that uh, actual issue. And Shaka would be more. Shaka is the one to talk about it because it is struggling today with the corona we are trying to push you know people to embrace the israeli fashion more than ever because we have many many talented uh, designers we have many that succeed over, uh, over uh, board uh, abroad uh, but still it's not easy today to to succeed in in, in fashion for well, Shaha, Shaha, what are your thoughts on that? How do you feel that, you know, fast fashion has influenced uh, how, how the fashion industry today and how, how much of a struggle has it been? Um, so I'm doing slow fashion from the beginning and I will say that it's very challenging, like, uh, like Moti said. Um, when you do fashion, today there's H&M and Zara, and people are used to buy t-shirts for 10 shekels, um, $3. And I can't argue with it. Like, I will never do um, t-shirts with the same price, but because I'm wearing my uh, clothes every day, so I know to say for sure that one dress of mine would be will be in your closet for four years definitely will stay at the same color and um, the fabric will be wonderful the shape will be beautiful on your body and i believe that because the world is really um in the middle of a crisis also like the weather crisis and we have to think about what is better for the world so in my opinion it's better to buy one dress uh, with will be more expensive um, than to buy 10 different dresses. 
So I believe in sustainability and I'm trying to, to do my best in, the, in order to help the world and also my clients. I'm happy to say that the positive part of it, that like my clients come back to me because after you buy one thing, so you know it's good, you know it's better for you, so you are coming back. But for sure, I always say, you should go and buy from a designer. It doesn't matter if it's not me, a different designer is better, but don't buy like too much for yourself in order like to wear it once and then not to use it again. We are, we are very lucky, you know, that Jewish people have many, many uh, uh, events. You know, we have bar mitzvahs, we have bat mitzvahs, yeah. we have, you know, people are getting married many times here. So you have many reasons to go to, to designers to buy a very, a very special and unique uh, um, outfit. Absolutely. And, and fashion is such an important part of culture. Um, you know, obviously we've, we're going through such a revolution at the moment as far as the environment goes, as far as health goes, as far as equality goes. Um, and fashion always makes has been has always been a statement and represents something. Betty, from I want to bring you in here from your point of view. What makes fashion such an important part of culture? Uh, fashion. First of all, I want to talk about before when I started bathing suits, Israeli bathing suits of Gothics and the Oberzo that were all over the world, and then it changed to uh, 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 evening dresses and wedding dresses. Today. A lot of Israeli designers, you know, they show people buy from all over the world their wedding dresses and their evening dresses. And I'm happy in a way what Shachal said, to choose not to buy, you know, so many, like even people that I know, they would buy through Amazon, through ASOS, a bathing suit for two, three dollars, take a shot with it for Instagram and then throw it in the garbage. So there's so much waste in the world, you know. I was, I went to Africa and uh, a lot of these clothing that people, you know, throw, they send them to Africa by bulks. And the Africans have nothing to do with, uh, with, with this fashion and this clothes. They need practical things. And so there was a lot of waste. I'm, I was born in India. I go to the factories in India. I see who works there. I see how the water, everything with the dyeing of the clothing, how, uh, how it, uh, it uh, pollutes the, the rivers and everything. I'm, I'm happy. I, I think what the corona will do is people will buy not as much, but they will buy stuff like shachar avnet, you know, where it'll hold on for a few years and not just for one season or just for a day and then they'll throw it. Uh, if you have a t-shirt for 10, you know, 10 shekels, you use it as a rag the next day. So that's one thing that's good that's going to come out, you know, from, uh, from this thing. And uh, fashion, I think fashion is like art. It's, uh, it, makes, uh, it makes life, uh, life interesting. When you look at, at the past, after World War II, you know, when women were working and Chanel came up with a black dress and uh, women did not go with uh, corsets anymore. I think every, every crisis brings something new to, to fashion. And uh, uh, also now I think something in every bad thing, there is something good. There is a present that comes out. And I still don't know what the present is going to be, but I think that this crisis will bring also something good uh, in, the, in the fashion industry. In the meantime, we are all bleeding here. There is no work for models. There are also models around the world, you know, it really went down. Uh, the, all the fashion industry here was, was very hard before the corona. It became much, much harder after the corona. But, uh, you know, life is waves, it's up and down, and I believe that uh, good things will come out, uh, out of it. Let's hope so. You mentioned something important that I want to bring up there, Shaha, the bridal industry. Let's talk about that, because the bridal industry is absolutely huge in Israel, and you, you are a bridal wear designer yourself. Tell us about how competitive it is here and how much recognition comes in for the bride from Israeli bridal designers coming from internationally. Um, well, Betty said it really great, but we are really famous in our like bridal and evening wear all over the world. 
Uh, I always say that it's because we are Jewish and we love to celebrate like life. And everyone in Israel pays so much attention to this important day of their life. So all the family comes together and they choose the wedding dress and then the, the mother dress and the sister dress. Um, it's competitive, but I'm doing something really like unusual. So I think the unusual brides come to me and of course I'm happy with it. Uh, I can say that when I'm going to Paris for Fashion Week, for example, and I'm doing also ready to wear. So a lot of like people asking me if I'm doing evening, evening wear because they know the Israelis are very good with it. So I would say that I'm proud with our industry and I really hope that it will survive after this summer because this summer of the virus is very... Like Betty said, we are bleeding here. So it's like, um, I will say that I, I, I believe that we are entering the new world. And the new world of fashion will be something um, maybe more real, maybe more uh, good for the environment, but it will be something else from the old world. And we have to start thinking about it together. Like I believe in a co cooperative and like to support each other and not to fight each other. So this is what I'm doing with all the people that are working with me at this moment. Like we are trying to help each other. And I think this is the best way to survive. Absolutely. Motti, coronavirus has basically, it's killed every, every industry but the fashion industry has been hit particularly hard. And I know for you, you've been hit particularly hard with the cancellation of Tel Aviv Fashion Week. Just tell us exactly how difficult and how much of a challenge it has been for you. But I, I would like to answer you about the, uh, the culture that you asked before, Betty. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that is very special in Israel. You know that... Uh, in Israel, Jewish people came from, you know, from the 50s, from around the world. They came from East Europe, they came from North Africa, they came from everywhere, and everybody brought his own culture. It's, you know, this is, in a way, we are a very young country. So every designer has his own, you know, today I was uh, in Shenkar, by the way, at, at the final, um, with the final critics today and and then you see that every student actually bring his family culture you know if it, it's, some of them are coming from religious country uh, families uh some of them are coming from uh, uh from all the ashkenaz you know countries east europe poland uh, russia so it's, it's become such an amazing mix that show and that everybody bring a different culture. And this is, I think, that is one of the most beautiful things that we have in our, uh, in the Israeli fashion. So this is for the culture. For the fashion week, you know, I believe that uh, I'm not a person, I'm very, I'm trying to be optimistic. I'm not bleeding. You know, I know it's very difficult to everybody. It's difficult to me too. But the moment that we had to uh, cancel the Fashion Week on uh, March, uh, I just started to write my own book. So I used uh, my, my time uh, to do something that I couldn't do in, a no in, in, you know, in, in, in the normal time. So for the last uh, two and a half months, I'm writing a book and I'm having the best time of my life. I know that it's difficult. I'm not saying that it's not difficult. It is, but I like changes, you know, and I believe that uh, the world is changing now and we are part of it. You know, Betty and I are older than Shlacha. So we, uh, we've had many things in our career for the last uh, 35 years. I think that Betty and I are working at the same time, but still you invent yourself after so many years and do something new, I think it's 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 uh, it's uh, um, it's something that I love. It's just challenging. It's very challenging. Yes, you know we worked for one year, 
you know, many designers, every, like if all the whole industry worked for, for the fashion week, but this is what it is, this is destiny. We cannot do anything for, for it. So I believe that everybody needs to think what can he do, you know, that he couldn't do before. Uh, that's how I see. Um, I hope, I, we, we don't know what it's going to be. We don't know if Fashion Week will happen, not here or around the world. We did shoot the whole shows without audience in one day. Shaha was uh, part of it. And it was a little bit sad because we um, and sad and, and, and happy because people like love to be there. But still, uh, um, life, you know, time is changing. And we have to think to know what how we are going to be part of this change. Absolutely. And it's good to have a positive outlook on that, Moshi. I want to go to a question from the audience now, and it's directed at Shaha. Shaha, are you planning on adapting your next collection now that so many events have been cancelled? And will you come out with a designer work from home collection? Well, like we said, I also believe that it's positive. And my next collection is ready for the winter. Uh, but at the moment, I'm not thinking of making it like into producing. Uh, the reason is that I used to work with plenty of uh, stores all over the world, but they are not really know what they're going to do like in winter because different places are reacting in a different way. I can say that in Israel, we are starting uh, the second round, so we don't really know what's going to happen in uh, October and November, but at the, at the same time, I would say that I always, every year, I'm thinking about uh, like the date of the winter collection supposed to start in August. In August in Israel, it's very hot. So anyway, I think that it's better to start with the winter around, let's say, October. Uh, but I have second plan and the, the plan is maybe to do like um, some like one of a kind. A collection then we will have one dress of each um, uh, dress that I will design and this dress will be in the middle between couture and they're ready to wear and I'm going to do a coronavirus collection for sure because I have this diary that I did when we were at home but it's gonna take me a while maybe one year from now I'm gonna do it uh, Definitely, because I think it's part of the history now. We are at a very special moment. And I feel this God is opening the door and we're going to cross to the other room. Now, we don't know what's going to be in the other room, but I believe that's something special. Yeah, so I feel sort of lucky like to be creative at this moment. Yeah. I'm loving the positive energy coming from all of you panelists today. I've got another question coming in and it's directed at Moti. Moti, are you creating a fashion line, a fashion show called I Love You More Than Life Itself? You know, this is my tattoo. Is it? I can't believe that you just said that. This is my <laughs> and my daughter tattoo, More Than Life Itself. I'm in shock. So? I, I, have we just have we just uh, announced something? Have we got some breaking news here? Are you going to be announcing a fashion line? Is there going to be a fashion show named after this? <laughs> I don't know, but you know it's so funny because I have one tattoo, and this is my tattoo, more than life itself. Because when I feel I thought... like our our audience member might have uh, <laughs> had had a little you bit know, of. I used, my I used to say to my daughter, she she used to say, "I love you," and I said, "I love you more than life itself." And that's why we made both of us this tattoo. <laughs> Beautiful. That's, that's so sweet. <laughs> Betty, we haven't heard from you in a while. Let's start touch, uh, go back to talking about modeling because uh, as we mentioned earlier, but we didn't really talk too much about it, social media and Instagram models have now become the new hot thing. But Israeli models seem to be extremely popular and really sort of g gaining some ground internationally. Where do you think the Israeli modeling industry stands on a global scale in your eyes? 
Israel, right now in Israel, there is this agency called ITM, and the models are working very strongly. They're not tall models, they're very voluptuous, very juicy. They have a lot of uh, followers. So they're the ones that are working like in, in Israel very strongly. Around the world, I have uh, Shadi Zigron in New York. I have Lilia Cristallo. Uh, uh, there is uh, a lot, uh, uh, really, a lot of great Sean Levy. She's not mine, but a lot of models that are really doing uh, well. Uh, Dorit Riblas uh, from, uh, from the Roberto Rotenburg Agency. There are a lot of, uh, I think, the beauty in, 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 in Israel because uh, there are mixtures. Like I'm Indian, my husband uh, is American from Lithuanian uh, origin. My kids are beautiful. They, they cannot be modeled, but they're beautiful. But there are a lot. Israel is a ground. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Because of the mixture, because of the cocktail, I think Israel will continue being, uh, will, will send out top, top models uh, around the world. So it's not something that will, uh, will, uh, will vanish. And what I do today, I do audition, which is uh, amazing. I do audition through the internet. I tell a girl, a girl wants to be a model. She, uh, I look at her Instagram, I interview her through the, through the, you know, the FaceTime, and I tell her if she can be a model, if she can. And if I see that there is something, she comes to my office. So it's really, uh, it's great that I can work from the house and. Uh, and do auditions all day for pretty girls. Another thing I do, I was a master chef, I'm a great cook, I cook Indian food. So every Wednesday I make a, a, a meal for women in my, you're allowed not more than 20, so for 20 women or 20 men and women. And then I tell them about the fashion industry, the models, all the stories uh, that uh, people love to hear uh, what's happening, you know, what's happening in the real stories in the, in the dressing room. And uh, it's going very well. And that's how I adapted, you know, to earn money uh, during Corona time. So there's always, you know, a way that you can, you know, I believe if you, you can be creative and find how to, you know, I use both things, fashion and, and my eye and, and cooking. And I do, I do both the things together today. That's nice to hear. Now, um, just with more questions coming in from the audience, I want to maybe ask this one to Shaha. Shaha, as you're a designer yourself, um, an audience member wants to know how much of an influence Arab culture has on Israeli fashion design and Jewish designers, if it has any influence there? Well, um, it's a beautiful question. Uh, I I can't say about all the Israeli designer. I can talk only about myself. <clears throat> I'm on the side that very love the Arab, uh, like all over the world, uh, also in my political opinion. So I actually follow on a different uh, pages on Instagram and definitely it affects me. Um, I believe that we should in Israel embrace each other and do everything we can do in order to be like have peace uh, in the daily basis so I'm, I'm doing my best when i was a student a, a student i did um a one project that was with arabic and um, german and hebrew because my culture is from like my grandmother is come from germany and from from then until today i do sometimes with songs like someone translate it into Arabic and then I try to do with the letters different things in my embroidery. Um, but at the moment I'm not working on a different project like a political one, maybe in a few months because I feel that we have to do something in order like to really show that we can live in peace. So, but I don't know if I'm like the good example. I don't know if, a lot of you're the designer best, you're are doing the best it. example. <laughs> no, there's there's another thing, Sarah. You have to understand that half of us, all pe all the Jewish people that came from Arab countries, they are their their family culture are from Arab culture. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not something that is is uh, is um is not close to us. Don't forget that in Israel, living many Arabs people, not just Jewish 
that came from Arab countries. So we are very involved in the Arab cultures everywhere, all of us. Absolutely. Um, and it is, pre it, is, it is obvious and prevalent, and it's not just the Arab cultural as well, but as you all mentioned, I think all three of you said at some stage throughout this conversation about how Israel is just such an eclectic mix of different cultures and everyone's moved here from somewhere else and all those, all those different styles have sort of fused in together to make this, this, the, is, to make it the Israeli fashion industry what it is. Um, Betty, do you think that Tel Aviv itself has a different sort of, has, it has its own style that is separate to the rest of Israel? All the time, it, we joke, we say Medina Tel Aviv. Medina Tel Aviv is like the, you know, it's like a... State of Tel Aviv. It's like a, by itself, you know, it's a... And uh, I think in Tel Aviv, women, uh, you know, we have the best uh, canyon, uh, Ramat Aviv. The women are dressed there, you know, really beautifully. You think it's, uh, uh, you think it's your, in, uh, like, New York or Paris or, or London. Uh, it's really one of the best shopping mall in Tel Aviv. And I think in Tel Aviv, women uh, dress, you know, they give more, uh, more credibility to how they come out from the house. But, and then uh, it's, it's, it's a big, it's like London, New York. It, Tel Aviv is really the main, the main place where everything is happening. But, uh, but I think, uh, and from Tel Aviv, it goes to the other places. Like there, the, Tel Aviv is the role model. And then uh, the other places, they copy, you know, the, what's going on. Also Tel Aviv, the rich people, because they cannot fly anymore, they buy, uh, they buy everything. You know the expensive stuff, whatever in the in the shopping mall. And uh, if you go to the shopping mall in Tel Aviv, in Rabat Aviv, it's doing very very well. It's not bleeding like the other shopping malls all around Israel. It's uh, people with money and they cannot fly. That's where they spend their money today. Uh, so uh, I would say Tel Aviv is uh, you know. Uh, different in a way. Also, uh, the, the question about before, we had a Moti chosen Israeli Arab to be the queen of beauty and she was a model for many, many years. And there are also Arab models today that uh, they're, you know, they, they're not like the olden days and they see something around the world and they want to be models. We have today beautiful Arab uh, models that they're from uh, Muslim or Druze even, or you know, uh, uh, Christian Arabs, but they, they have a place today in the body in Israel. Good to hear. Hang on, just bear with me a moment. I'm just going to get some more questions up for Marty. Who do you think is the next big designer, the next big up and coming designer in Israel? Who should we look out for? You no, know, they are all my kids. So you can't ask me that question. <laughs> you know, we have I, I, and you know, in fashion, it's when you talk about fashion, you're talking about stars. Every woman has a different star. So it's not about like you cannot ask about like one because Shahar has uh, her own style and other designers are, have their own style. We have we have uh, um, designers, you know. Israel is a very small place in the world, you know. You don't have many Turkish or Belgian or, or, or Dutch or, or Spanish, you know, uh, Christian Dior. We have many uh, designers that succeed uh, outside Israel. I think one of our best uh, designers that succeed very much lately is Dodo Baro. Uh, she's doing very, very, very well everywhere. Um, she's selling like, I think more than like in 300 best places in the world. So you have success. You have, uh, but, uh, but I cannot say, I said, I said one because she's like really successful lately in the last two, two years. Uh, everybody will uh, agree with me. Um, okay. Well, Shachal, you know, for uh, you know, Shachal, where you know, dress. Uh, uh, when you dress celebrities today around the world, 
it says uh, it's gives you a lot of credit and it's open you for like new markets, right? Shaha. For you to um uh, yeah, Yana. of course. Yeah, oh. yeah, of course. Well, when you dress celebrities, uh, especially like the biggest celebrities, like Beyonce, I dressed five times. So of course it's important and it's help, but the way I see it, because of the, all over the world, everyone can do almost everything because of Instagram. You can reach out to plenty of people that you, like for example, a few years ago, you couldn't. So the feeling is almost that if you will do it, then okay you've done you did everything but it's not so i did it only only after one year like i opened my brand and after almost one year even not one year i already dressed out beyonce and it was like of course i fell on the rough of the world but at the same moment it was only my beginning so on my in my eyes you have to keep doing everything in order to keep like selling and reach out the customers it's a long process and it's not happening even after you dress like celebrities for sure it's really helped in the process and it's really important these days but it's not everything i feel that Today, a lot of people almost think that it's like to do everything, like you succeed with it, then everything happening just like that. And it's not. It's almost the opposite, I feel. Then you have to keep working even harder. Well, Shaha, sorry, just, yeah. I just want to quickly ask Shaha, how did that collaboration between you and Beyonce come about? So we talked about Instagram. So I also will say that for sure, like it's through the Instagram, there is one amazing page of an Israeli um, woman that's called Ofri Cohen. And this girl have, well, I can check, but I, I guess that it's around 700K or something like that. And she's doing spotlight on different designers around the world. And she's also writing on Vogue. And we became friends because she loved my fashion and I was following it on her page and I didn't know she's Israeli. And one day she was asking for, for me to send her images in order to her to show in her page. And through that page, the assistant of the Beyonce stylist, uh, she saw my dresses and she started following me from like just a small account without her name and I didn't knew she was following me. And one day she just sent me an email. But if you are asking me, it's only God creation because one year before she did it, I actually decided to open my own business because I want to dress Beyonce. And I wrote it on Instagram saying, I wonder when Beyonce is gonna wear my dresses. And then I, I quit my job and I opened my own business. And eight months later, I got this email from her stylist asking the dress. So for me, that, it's like my, my miracle. That's amazing. Motti, you wanted to add something there? Did I, is it, still, is it too late? I want to add uh, no, I didn't know the story. It, no, uh, no, I said that, you know, like career, it's uh, what Shachal said, that people think that young designer think that if they are dressing like a big celebrity, this, uh, it, it, it's, it's like one step from like thousands. And Betty will tell you, you know, we are, when like, like career takes long, long, long time. I can tell you that after 35 years, I always said this is only the beginning for me. Always, you know. Moti won't tell you, I mean, they're all his children, like he said, but I'm following now a designer. His name is Aaron Genish. He was a yeshiva bocher, very, very religious, extremely religious. And he came out and they have articles about him, but he's doing his design. And it's amazing to me how someone who lived like, a, you know, a, in an orthodox, extremely orthodox environment, uh, can take out these great creations. Uh, I'm sure Moti knows about him, but he's like my favorite because I admire people that, you know, did it, even though they come from a 
from a different world, and they entered this beautiful world of fashion. We 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 took uh, Aaron. You know, we have uh, with Fashion Week Tel Aviv with the Israeli Lottery. We're doing the last six years a beautiful. But, um, we're choosing every year between five to six uh, young designers. They're get, they're getting like one hundred fifty thousand shekel and mentoring. Shaka, by the way, was one of them. Uh, and Aaron, in the last season, the the guy that um, that Betty was spoke uh, talk about it. Uh, just one in, in the last uh, in the last season. It's a beautiful project that we're doing every year. Um, Go. We just have. I was just didn't I mean to interrupt you, you there, but these are Shaha's designs on Beyonce. Shaha, yeah. tell us about them. Yeah. Well, the the one that we see now is actually from the video of Lion King. And for me, it was the most special one because I just got the inspiration board from the stylist. And she wrote to me, do like anything that you want with this inspiration board. And because it was after we know each other already, I, this is like the sixth dress. So we know each other and she trusts me. And for me, it was my creation for Beyonce without like uh, no uh, really instructions. And after I was sending the dress to her, she was just like really um, positive about it. So for me, it was the moment of um, be part of this uh, like design process all over the world. Because for a designer to get like a mood board and to hear the world do anything that you want with it, it's like, come on, I will do everything that I want. So this is like this dress. For sure, for sure. Aguilera, yeah. What an absolute dream. Uh, an audience member wants to know, Shaha, if you're still dressing Netta as well. Uh, well, Netta, she was like one of the first projects that I did in Israel. It was on her way to the Eurovision and she was wearing my kimono out of my first collection. Uh, it was the only time she was wearing my uh, dresses. And it was like beautiful at the moment and I will be, I will be saying that may be like iconic uh, for her and for me too. So these days, not really. Um, maybe in the future. Another question that has popped up in the audience and I think it's um, uh, important to mention at the time during considering the global movement we're having here in relation to Black Lives Matter. It's in relation to um, Ethiopian models. There is a big Ethiopian community here in Israel. I think perhaps, Betty, you can answer this question. Uh, do we, are we seeing many Ethiopian models here in Israel? Well, not yet. Even though they're gorgeous girls, I have a model, Veret Sahil, or she's already, you know, she's like eight years uh, with me, and it's hard to push uh, Ethiopian models. She's beautiful. She's like really gorgeous. I was the first one what started with Ethiopian models, I'm talking about 30 years ago, uh, with ST Babo, I had a great model, but uh, uh, they're not successful, and there is still, there isn't a demand, you know, for, for Ethiopian models. So unfortunately, I'm very sad about it. Uh, it's, it's amazing that now, uh, was the queen of beauty, uh, so she, that Moti also, you know, uh, helped to launch her and she's working well. And there is Titi, uh, there's Titi and there is, yeah. uh, there are two girls that they are now celebrities. So that, like they're working, but, okay, now it's your turn. <laughs> well, I will explain to you, Sarah, by the way, uh, like three years ago in the, in the one, one of the shows in the Tel Aviv Fashion Week, my ex, ex boyfriend, no, ex, ex, ex boyfriend, sorry. Uh, is Marcelo Boulon. He's a, um, he's a designer from Milan. And he came to show here in Tel Aviv and we showed, he, and we showed only with Ethiopian models, male and, and, and female. But the problem is with uh, Ethiopian, by the way, I'm married now, so there's no XXX anymore. But, uh, <laughs> but the, the thing with the Ethiopian uh, models today, is that most of them are coming from religious families. 
and that's why they're not because I'm always every time that I'm looking for it, you know, they 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 don't most of them don't want to even that that they are beautiful and that they are the the family issues. So this is the reason actually. This is the reason. Okay, understandable as well. Um, another interesting question that came in is also for you, Monty. Now, we know Isabel Morant just shot her spring collection here in Israel. Do you think that we will see more designers making their way to Israel to, uh, to, to you know, sort of using, using Israel as a platform to sort of bring out their labels? Listen, uh... Giorgio Armani uh, uh, shoot the, the last year here. Um, today it's a very hard. Uh, I cannot. We cannot say anything today because today everything changed. You know, who's flying today? Um, yes, you know. I, we thought that it will be at the beginning that uh, the f fashion designers come to shoot in Israel because you know. Given that Israel is a very small place, our weather is amazing. It's much cheaper to shoot in Israel. Uh, you have everything. You have the desert. You have uh, the Jordan River. You have Jerusalem. You have all the uh, all, all kind of all the places. We made a beautiful shoot uh, years ago with one of the magazines in New York that they took place uh, that they shoot in all the Holy places in Jerusalem, Nazareth, and uh, Galilee. But right now, I think that uh, very un uh, unfortunate. And and, and and I finished my book, so don't disturb me now. <laughs> Shaha, when it comes to picking, as we just said, you know, we're looking at it right now, but, you know, designers coming here, as Motti said, it, you know, it is, there is, there's such a, a variety of stages, you could call it here, for, for shooting campaigns. Um, how do you style and put together your campaigns? Do you, what, what, what elements do you think about when you're putting this together? Um, so, first of all, there's the element of the light. Uh, in Israel, the, it's a very uh, hot weather, and most of the year, the, the like the weather, uh, you cannot uh, take really good photo shoot outside in the like we say noon time. So you need to find the right hours. It's mostly in the morning and in the evening time. And when I'm doing a catalog, so it's really around some my inspiration. So I will give, for example, my Wonderland collection was about um, my own personal miracles while I was opening my own business, like I talked about like a few minutes ago. Um, so for me, it was making like a fantasy world, like to try and show what's going on, like in the unusual world of the uh, people. So we did a photo shoot in a circus and we brought like uh, models, but around them, there were different people doing these crazy things because I wanted to show a fantasy world. And um, the photo shoot before was black woman um, sitting on the tree because I wanted to show this fantasy world of the nature. So when I'm doing a photo shoot, I mainly think about the inspiration and of the best way to show the inspiration in a visual way. Okay, now we are going to wrap it up quickly, but there are a few more, just a, a few finer details that I just want to very quickly get out of you for some of the audience members. First of all, um, Betty, someone wants you to please repeat the name of the former yeshiva student who is now a designer. Aharon Gedish. Aharon Gedish. Wonderful. And, and Edith Cohen wants to say hi. Apparently... For a short time, you were their agent when they were a model back in the day. So that's also for you. Now, just before we wrap it up, guys, even I'm going to ask you. My, 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 uh, even what he was my uh, model many, many years ago. I, I mean, so many. I, I took out since I opened in 1985 and uh, 
until today I find all the great, really great, great uh, people. So I'm sending her my best uh, regards and uh, she can join me on Facebook or Instagram and uh, I would love to be in touch with her. I'm sure she will indeed. Now guys, before I let you all go, I want to get a few quick answers out of you all. Let's talk about, first of all, what's the main thing that is keeping you busy during this coronavirus lockdown? Motti, let's start with you. I think I know the answer already. <laughs> I told you. Um, Your book. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book and uh, I'm having the best time of my life. That's good to hear. <laughs> with my boyfriend and we have four kids i have two kids he has four kids two kids sorry so mostly we are home he's cooking i'm writing best time ever. nice betty what about you i'm uh, i'm writing a book uh, too and there is a guy from uh, uh from los angeles that's doing he wants to do uh, a series about, for netflix about my life I come from a religious home. I don't know how I ended up uh, doing what I'm doing today. And uh, I do, uh, you know, every Wednesday evenings at my place. And I, uh, I give lectures about the bombing world. Uh, I give lectures to polemic and adorific youngsters. Uh, uh, I meet with them. I try to take them out from their you know, the situation they are in. Uh, uh, I have two beautiful yeah. friends. So I'm, uh, I'm busy. You're busy, you're busy. And Shaha, how are you keeping yourself busy? Well, at the, fir at the first I was drawing a lot and learning how to rest for a long time because I was running for 10 years. So now it's like to keep doing everything that I do, but in a different um, time maybe. And these days I'm working, I'm going to my studio, I'm working on a new design and I'm to doing Zoom with my customers and I'm working. You're working. Yeah. Sarah, what, what are you doing to stay busy besides busy every day? Well, for me, I have, um, yes, as you mentioned, when, when the whole world goes into lockdown, journalists come out. Exactly. So I've been working even more than ever, but I'm training for a marathon at the moment. So that's what's keeping me busy. I've just been... Uh, hitting the pavement as much as possible, which is um, a bit painful during this heat that we're in, but I have to do it. You've got to start now if you want to be able to run well in the winter. Exactly. I mean, I agree. Getting outside a little bit, even safe, safe socially distancing, but getting outside and hiking or walking around is certainly important. Um, I know in Tel Aviv, all of you, it's very difficult since summertime in Tel Aviv is supposed to be beach time. So, uh, I feel for you. I'm in LA, so it's the same thing here. Everybody wants to go, go, go. Um, anyhow, thank you guys so much. This discussion was amazing. Thank you all the panelists. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for moderating. Uh, once again, Creative Community for Peace is a nonprofit. So if you would like to find out more about us or donate, go to ccfpeace.com, ccfpeace.com. Uh, you can sign up for our email list there. You can get more updates. We have plenty more panels coming up. Uh, over the next few weeks with the East Coast community, with some sports uh, stars. So please stay connected with us and thank you guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, thank you so you. much. It's been a pleasure. Bye. 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 Bye.